welcome back to season three of the New Joneses EV on tour with my friend and confidant Tam Tam Tamagotchi. Uh, how you doing? I'm fabulous. Welcome to season three. I'm super excited about this one. This season we're going to save money and save the planet. Who? Janet? The planet slaps. Oh yeah, yeah. Planet. Gotcha. Save money, gotcha. save the planet. So this season we are meeting people in their homes who've worked out how to heat and cool their homes with a lot less money, yep. making their homes more comfy, okay. more energy efficient and healthier, but at the same time, because they're using less energy, they are cooling the climate. We're gonna electrify everything this season. Are you ready? Dave Martin, yep. take one. Lucas, take one. Richard Keat. <laughs> Keep saying yes. It's Luke. It's Luke. Sorry. Lucas is fine. I like yeah. Lucas. Who are you and why am I interviewing you? I'm Dave Martin and I'm a builder. I'm Richard Keach, um, homeowner, energy efficiency consultant. Slats, I'm the building designer for this project. And you're interviewing me to talk about this beautiful home here in magical Cape Patterson, which we call Paradise. You're at my house, a great house that shows all electric efficient houses really well. Where are we? What are we doing here and why are we doing it? We're at wonderful Cape Patterson on the Bunurong Coast, South Gippsland, Victoria, Australia. We're talking about all efficient electric homes. So Dave, what is uh, an energy efficient all electric home? An energy efficient electric home is a home that is high performance. So really well insulated, holds in the heat in winter, holds out the heat in summer. All electric, meaning no other sources of energy aside from electricity, no gas, no firewood. And that's important because we want to get off fossil fuels. And then also has really low energy use. So solar PV, uh, induction or electric cooktops, heat pump, hot water systems, just really efficient, low cost, low energy running items. Energy efficiency comes about through a really careful design process. If the building is designed to work with the landscape rather than just be plonked on the landscape, it's gonna last the test of time. We're gonna have a home that can be resilient even when the weather gets more extreme. Like this home pretty much runs almost all of the year without any help. When you're talking to your designer or your builder, you need to ask, is my home going to be pretty much self-sufficient most of the time? And the answer should be yes. Aussie homes are called glorified tents by some people in that they're badly insulated and they're expensive to heat and cool. What's the better alternative for people wanting to you know, save money on heating and cooling their homes? Draft proofing is fundamental and, and really overlooked. I grew up in a weatherboard home, had no insulation, timber floors, drafty and I remember basically sitting on the, the gas heater in the morning in winter. Yeah. Insulation improvements, a lot of people take for granted what insulation they have but often it doesn't work properly and, and glazing, glazing is really important to, to get right and going from single glaze to double glaze um, takes windows from being really terrible to just being really bad and then we can get them into good territory by adding um, good window coverings as well. So blinds and drapes. Yeah, blinds and drapes and, and shades on the outside if need be. So what is so good about having no energy bills and being cool in the summer and warm in the winter? I think the answer's hidden in the question there, Slats. <laughs> so what's not to like about not having bills? <laughs> you're just a lot more comfortable. You're living healthier from there. You're less reliant on the overall system. So I think it was last year there was around here like four days without power. But this home, it has its own battery bank. So they're super self -sufficient. It's going to save me money in the long term, but where does one get the dough to start with? There's no reason why if you're on a really tight budget you can't just try and get that north aspect in. Insulate is a really cost effective way of getting good performance of the building and getting some nice cross flow ventilation. People don't realise it, a tree that you grow at the east or west end of your house could save you thousands of dollars in energy bills because it will give you lovely summer shading. Just by making more careful choices at the time you build. It doesn't have to be necessarily more expensive at all. Richard, you've crunched the numbers and you're saying that uh, you can save about 5K a year through energy efficiency. Talk me through it, brother. For this house as an example, we're only using about 1.7 kilowatt hours a day from the grid. We've got a, a surplus of about 10,000 kilowatt hours a year, thanks to the solar. So we've got 10 kilowatt hours of battery 
But a battery is not necessary unless you're worried about grid reliability. Um, I actually don't recommend a battery in the first instance to most people. It's kind of the icing on the cake. For people that make the house all, all electric, get off gas, you've got the avoided gas costs as savings, you've got solar on your roof offsetting a lot of your grid consumption. And so overall, you've got less energy used overall yep. and, and uh, much lower energy bills. So, and then even offset your petrol costs if you, if you move to an EV. So, and the, the trick in doing that is to try and use as much of the energy that you generate on your roof within the house uh, as it's being generated, rather than exporting it all to the grid. So Luke, when people come to you around designing their homes, what questions should they be asking? I think that it's about how we can use spaces in, in a new and creative way. So some people build too many rooms and we're just sort of piling space on space on space. And what we really need to think about is build smaller. Why? Because you save a lot of money now, you save a lot of money on the energy costs running the building and on the maintenance costs. So it's a, it's a win, win, win. So Luke, what do you say to the question, where's the payback? When my clients ask that, I would say, you don't expect your floorboards to pay themselves back or the bench top. If you've got a house that can't deal with the climate, then, you know, that's a much worse payback than being able to sit in your home and be comfortable. That's sort of backwards thinking. I think we've got to look forwards. Richard, you've been a contributor to the Facebook page, uh, My Efficient Electric Home. What would you say is driving all these people to make energy efficient upgrades to their homes? The biggest motivator is comfort. When people find themselves too cold in winter, it really focuses the mind on, on trying to fix that. Then energy costs would be another driver and a small proportion of are interested for environmental reasons, but it's mostly comfort and, and energy costs. Richard, what's the healthiest, most affordable option for heating my home during the winter? People often don't realise that something they may already have at the moment in an air conditioner is actually the best way to heat a house. So a reverse cycle split system, for example, is actually much more efficient and less expensive than uh, heating with gas. Can you explain a heat pump to me? Reverse cycle split systems um, are an example of a heat pump and a heat pumps the technology in a fridge. It's also found in new heat pump hot water services. My gas stove. At home at the moment, I've got a plug-in electric stove. I mean, is that a good alternative um, for someone looking to get started? What you're doing is going, okay, what I can do is I'm not going to support that side of things of the gas and I'm going to move to electric. So I think the, the electric cooktop or you know your plug-in inductions is a really good kind of one percenter that can really start that shift happening. At the My Efficient Electric Home group we, we, we have a motto, we don't burn stuff here and, and I think that's important to help reframe the way we, we look at energy. In a generation Kids will look back and say, you really burn gas in the kitchen? Yeah. What were you thinking? <laughs> From a, apartment dweller to you know, mansion owner, where do you get started? Number one would be these guys, the new Joneses. They're some really good educational stuff, really easy to watch. And it's everything from really tight basic budget freebies right to if you've got a trillion dollars. Your electricity provider I think is a great one. You can really source a sustainable electricity provider now. I think that's quite an easy change to do. I think that one percenter of switching from a gas cooktop to an electric cooktop. And then there's the other thing to, if say apartment living is drapes and blinds, you, yep. can, you can get different insulated drapes and blinds. In 60 seconds or less, tell me how and why you went energy efficient all electric. Your time starts. Now, I think what, what we need to do as, as society or humanity is look that kind of seven generations ahead. Look at the environment, look at our kids, 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 kids and so on from there. The less impact we can have on the planet um, and we try and work in harmony with the planet is better. And I think moving to an electric, better performing home is a great kind of movement towards having kind of no harm and, and starting to live in harmony with, with the environment. This is a great example of something that's in our immediate interest to, um, to do in the long term and it saves us money in the short term. It sends a strong message as well to, um, to, to get off gas. It just made sense. An all electric home, an efficient home is so vitally important. Thanks so much. Great to have a chat. Love it Dave, thanks very much. Thank you. Richard, thank you very much for your time. You're welcome.
It's like, so you know there's a history with coal in this place? No, mate. They used to mine coal in Wontaggi mm. and bring it down to the Cape and row it out to a tall ship on a boat and sail it to Melbourne. And you can still find coal here today on the beach. Really? This is a piece I found. So this is coal. Don't be scared. Don't be afraid. Isn't that exactly what we need to be afraid of, mate? Yeah, I'm kidding. This is exactly what we need to be getting away from. 